Hey everyone, here we have the Fisher-Price Snoo Wannabe. I believe it's called the Luminate. Basically, it's an automated bassinet which is supposed to afford you as a parent a little bit more sleep. Anyway, we did a video on the Snoo, or maybe I'm gonna combine these videos, not really sure yet. But anyway, we did a video on the Snoo and this is going to be the kind of Snoo comparison. So, and uh, also, yeah, honey, um, put your damn laundry away. Anyway, so, Let's go ahead and open this thing up. First thing you will notice about the Fisher-Price Luminate is that the box is about three times smaller, which is kind of nice. It's easier to bring up and down the stairs, but let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we got here. Not for nothing, but I like the packaging on this a heck of a lot better. I don't know if the camera's exposing all that well, but we're just gonna have to kind of deal with it. Uh, a couple little more pieces of tape here. Boom, boom. Then you'll notice right off the bat, again, if the camera's picking up on it, is that this thing looks damn near identical to a Snoo. So, I don't know, we'll see how that goes. It does come, of course, with an app, kind of like the Snoo. Inside, we've got the bassinet itself. Here's a little bag of stuff. Looks like a little power, power cord, some screws. Boom. And then inside here, we've got the legs and these things, which I'll figure that out. We've got the bottom here. Um, just gonna go ahead and clip these legs into it. Overall, the aesthetic is, you know, again, I mean, basically, it's not quite as modern or premium looking per se, but from far away, you wouldn't be able to tell. You do have a, a much more involved control panel here on the front, but obviously we'll get to that later. But ultimately it does, I don't know, it just sort of looks, looks the same. All right, so much like the Snoo, these things go in a specific orientation. They're labeled uh, with numbers, so this is at the number four. Uh, that is kind of nice, by the way. That's very intuitive for a potentially tired parent. So. Clip that one in. This one does have cord management built in. For what it's worth, the Snoo had it too, but it was kind of a manual thing that you had to clip on the leg. This one's sort of like built on the leg already from factory. Nice touch, Fisher Price. Anyway, leg clips in. Pop the last one on. Here's number three. Number three leg, interesting. There's two number threes, a number four, and a number five. That's a little bit curious, but it doesn't really matter, does it? All right, so uh, once those are snapped in, uh, I think what these are are basically the supports that hold the actual like bassinet wall up. To be fair, I actually kind of like the way that is a little better than the Snoo as well, because uh, again, it kind of made packing this thing a little bit easier and sort of a better box. By all accounts, the design of this thing is superior so far. Um, there is one thing worth noting, and that is that the Snoo has a built-in shield beneath the like platform to supposedly protect your child's head against wireless radiation so they don't grow a third arm later on in their life. Uh, I don't know if this one has that. That is something I'll research and then get back to you all on, but nevertheless, uh, so far, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. Um, anyway, let's figure out how to get this thing assembled here. So now you'll see there are, these by the way are numbered as well. So this one is a, what number are you? This is a number one, this is a number one slot. So this thing clips in. This one is numbered a two, <laughs> number two. Um, and snap this one on in the back here. They all snap in exactly the same. All right, so we're just gonna take the screws out of the little pink bag here. Now most people will probably want to use a regular screwdriver. However, I subscribe to the power theory. So we're gonna go ahead and Blob this up here. Boom, one down, couple to go. For what it's worth, this is really quite easy. Um, you know, the fact that you have to bust out a screwdriver is really not that big of a deal. I still maintain, I still maintain it's a nicer design this way, so you don't have to worry uh, about the giant box. All right, so glancing inside this thing, basically it is just a piece of cardboard uh, or particle board, um, but 
I don't know if there's a wireless shield underneath it. I am kind of curious. There is a speaker on the back, and I'll get some B-roll to show that. But overall, the construction is about near identical to the Snoo. Put this little thing in. Of course, it is removable and washable, so that's nice, but you just pop this little thing in. Of course, that is where your baby is going to sleep. Let's go ahead and set this thing up and plug it in and get down to some action here. By the way, the other nice thing about this is that the power cord is just simply a USB cord. Um, you know, not for nothing, but considering this thing is $256 or $250, maybe even a little bit cheaper, and comparing that to the Snoo's like $1,600, it's a little bit hard to justify the cost of the Snoo, but you know, that said, the Snoo might be made of slightly more premium materials, maybe like less stuff made in China. All right, so we're plugged in and we're ready to go. At first glance, the options that you have on the front here, of course, you've got the power button and then the Bluetooth pairing when you wanna do it with the app. Looks like you've got a crying baby face, some kind of bookmark looking thing here, volume up and down for the white noise. I'm assuming this allows you to choose between music and a soundscape, something here, probably the vibration, and then turning the light on and off. Uh, that is one kind of nifty feature that this has that the Snoo does not, is a built-in light to check on the baby if it's in the dark. Let's see if we can get some B-roll footage of that uh, at nighttime. But yeah, basically you toggle that on and off and it turns a light on and off. Unlike the Snoo, there do not appear to be any kind of like security clips that you need to use on this thing. Basically, you can just put them in a sl uh, swaddle sack and then, um, you know, rock and roll. Let's go ahead and go through these buttons here. First off, this right here is a motion sensor. It is super, super sensitive, but what it does is it activates the light that is underneath the, underneath the Luminate uh, if you have the motion activated uh, feature enabled. Power button obviously goes without saying. And then we have the touch to light up option enabled, but this is basically the pre- you can kind of customize this in the app, and we'll show that later on, but in the app you can tell it, you know, if you want it to vibrate first, make a specific noise, whatever it is. But ultimately this is sort of the hot button that you press when you put the kid in and you want it to sense if the baby is going to cry. This right here is a bookmark feature that does not enable the whole baby crying sensing option, but what it does do is it sets up a quick bookmark of a specific sound, volume level, and vibration level that you would want. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and a nice touch that they added on there, just a little, you know, quick, quick button. Obviously, volume up and down for the noises. Right here, this is the specific sounds that they give you. There is like ocean, industrial, rain, and a few others. And then this is, of course, a, a, a series of music tracks, you know, Rockabye Baby, stuff like that. This is the vibration level. It has a small, medium, and aggressive mode, or, you know, big mode, whatever. We have found that the small and medium are almost non-existent. So you're probably going to want to have it on max the entire time if you want the baby to feel anything. And then of course, this is the light that activates the interior light in the Luminate itself. Now, uh, I'll get into this in the video, but the reason why these uh, the sounds are annoying is because not only are they a very quick loop, about 10 seconds long, uh, but they also, every single one of them, has a weird sort of like noise in it um, that you'll, as the parent, you will fixate on in the middle of the night and it will keep you up because it has, you know, basically nine seconds of rain sound and then like a very, like, like a beep or something like that. And then it goes back to the beginning and you just hear this, you know, every 10 seconds, every 10 seconds. I'm going to try to pick it up on microphone, although I don't know how successful it will be. All right, now let's go ahead and do an app walkthrough so you can see how this thing kind of works. So the beginning screens here are mo like most apps where they just sort of show you a demo of some of the features, but we're just gonna go ahead and skip right through those. When we finally get to the home screen, this is where most of the magic happens. Much like the Snoo app, it allows you to control a variety of different things, and such as the vibration level, timers, which sounds you play, and that kind of stuff. It's all pretty intuitive and pretty straightforward. Hitting this little toggle switch up here at the top left allows you to change things like the light that's inside the bassinet, 
frankly, I would recommend keeping that on as medium to low as a level as possible, so not to wake the baby up. Uh, floor lights, we went ahead and turned those off altogether because the lights were super annoying, and the motion sensor in the center, which seems like a cool idea on paper, ended up being really, really annoying because of how sensitive it was. Basically, if a fly uh, flew past it, it would, it would activate the light and then wake you up in the middle of the night. And neither my wife or I are terribly sensitive sleepers. Next thing, of course, are the control panel lights, which are basically the buttons on the front. And you can either choose to have those always on or touch to wake. We chose touch to wake because once again, they were incredibly bright, even on their low setting. So this allowed you to just get a little bit less ambient light in the room. We'll go back and smart sensing system. It allows you to customize it again, kind of like the SNOO. It allows you to choose sort of what it does based on maybe how old your baby is, a couple of different modes. I'm not gonna bother going into those modes because they're sort of irrelevant, at least for what we're talking for now. You get to choose the noise, white noise, industrial nature, ocean, and rain. They're all terrible. I'll get into that more later. And then of course, how much vibration you want. Now, the thing with the vibration is that whether you pick low, medium, or high, you can barely feel it. Now, I'll get into that again more later in the final thoughts, but nevertheless, you do get to choose the amount that you'd like. We recommend doing high because it's probably the only one the baby could actually feel, and the whole start vibration after first cry thing is sort of like the snoo, where when it detects that they're crying, it kicks in. The rest of the app is pretty straightforward. If you hit the little uh, gear at the top right, it allows you to choose things like what you name it, um, firmware numbers, probably updates and stuff like that if you had to. You can, of course, turn it on and off from the button in the center here. And then if you hit the little house, it allows you to go to a dashboard where it shows you the Luminate bassinet and then music on the go. So I guess if you just sort of wanted to put them in there for like a nap time or something like that, you can do so. And then of course the plus symbol allows you to add another device if you needed to. So the app is very intuitive, very straightforward. And all in all, we think that Fisher Price did a good job designing the application. We really have no faults there at all. Uh, it's sort of similar to the Snoo app with the exception that the Snoo app does have a uh, sort of age-related tips page, which we think is a really, really nice function. I don't know if it's worth $1,600, but nevertheless, it's a really nice function where it basically says, hey, your baby's three months old, and we recommend that you start doing X and X with them, whereas the Fisher-Price app doesn't have anything like that. Fisher-Price, if you are watching, we recommend doing something similar. All right, so what are my final thoughts on the Fisher-Price Luminate? And I am very, very sorry to say, but after using this thing for a couple of weeks, I must give this thing an absolute product fail. Upon unboxing, and before you actually use this thing in your bedroom, this thing looks pretty sweet. At $250, it absolutely beats the heck out of the snooze 17, almost $1,700 price tag. The fact is, is that there's a lot of nifty features about this thing. It comes in a smaller box and shipping, so it's a little bit less wasteful, easier to manage, moving it around, you get the idea. The vinyl sidings on it are a little bit easier to clean. In general, this thing is a little bit easier to clean. Setup was a breeze. In fact, I'd actually say the setup on the application was easier than it was on the Snoo. And just overall, a lot of the things that it comes with are just a little bit easier to work with than the Snoo. However, there are so many drawbacks to this thing that basically after the first day of using it, you are absolutely going to go insane. The first super annoying thing about this are the built-in lights. Now, again, on paper, it seems kind of convenient that you have both a light on the floor and then one built into the bassinet. That allows you to kind of see the baby as you're working with them in the dark. But we never really missed it or wanted it with the snoo, and we found ourselves not really needing it on the Fisher Price either. In fact, we just turned it off and kept it off the entire time. It only served to add ambient light to the room to keep us awake, and then frankly just kept the baby sort of unsettled as well. Then there of course is the floor light, which must only be there to prevent you from stubbing your toe in the middle of the night because the legs on this thing stick out in such an awkward fashion, and again, this was not a problem on the snoo, that you always find yourself walking into it. And that will, of course, wake the baby up. That'll, of course, have you screaming swear words in the middle of the night, which then, of course, negates exactly why you bought this thing in the first place, which was to make yourself and your baby's sleep time a little bit easier. And light isn't just an issue on the floor and the inside of the bassinet either, the control panel, which again, you can turn off and then have a very clever touch to on feature, but that is also super, super bright. So default out the gate, you're of course gonna need to mess with all those light settings, but we can't help but feel like they should have designed things a little bit better instead of focusing on all of the light technology in this thing. And that goes with the next part of it. The materials on this thing, I mean, they are a little bit cheap and chintzy. And frankly, for the price, I think they did an absolutely outstanding job. 
However, where they really had a drawback was where they engineered the sounds. So if you hit the little leaf on the front of the uh, Luminate, it's supposed to toggle through a few different noises, such as rain, ocean, industrial, and a couple of other things. Anyway, the problem is that those sound loops, every single one of them, have not only are they very short, so basically the entire rain or ocean loop itself is maybe like 10 seconds long, so basically every 10 seconds it's basically starting from the beginning, starting from the beginning, but at the end of every single loop is some kind of annoying little blip, noise, or bump, just something that you will fixate on during the entire evening that you're trying to go to sleep. Obviously the baby doesn't care, but for you as the parent, if this thing is in your bedroom, basically if you've got, if you're sleeping with the baby for the first few months, then that is going to drive you absolutely insane. And it wasn't just me, but my wife as well was like, do you hear that? Is there like a weird noise or something coming from that thing? And I was like, yes, it's the Luminate and it's absolutely driving me insane. So basically if you are the kind of parent, we of course are, that you want to have your baby in the same room with you for the first few months, this Luminate is definitely not not for you. I, it's, it's really that bad. And then finally, the vibration method. Now, you buy these smart bassinets for the, with the sole intention that as the baby starts to cry, it will automatically start kind of jiggling them and playing them a noise and try to lull them back to sleep. It kind of affords you as the parent a little bit of extra Z's. However, the vibration in the Luminate, whether you're on low, medium, or high, is so painfully soft that I'm not even sure the baby is really feeling it, much less responding to it. That's one thing about the Snoo, and of course the Mamaru and a few others, they have these very big, um, vibrant motions, very dynamic, that are sort of engineered to put the baby back to sleep. But this little vibration isn't doing anything other than maybe keep you up at night with another ambient noise. So. I don't know. I really wanted to like the Luminate. It looks exactly like the Snoo, and it is a literal fraction of the price, but I would really recommend skipping this and looking at spending either a little bit more money for the Mamaru or just ultimately throwing down for a Snoo. Obviously, you as the parent are going to need to decide if, if spending the extra money on the Snoo is worth it. Personally, we didn't think it was. It's a very, very expensive item, but there are some nice things such as the construction, the wireless shield, uh, the sound, the white noise sound is a little bit more bearable, and just in general the construction and thoughts are a little bit better on it. Uh, we also like the fact that the Snoo application has some built-in hints and tips as you're a new parent and you're trying to kind of navigate your way through uh, the scariness of a new baby. Uh, the Fisher Price doesn't offer anything like that. So yeah, uh, skip the Luminate. It is not a good product. Uh, there are much, much better options out there and ones for not a whole lot of more money. We don't think that this is going to give you any more, or your baby, any more sleep. So anyway. That is the Fisher Price Luminate. We will be coming out with a video on the Mamaru bassinet here soon as well. Uh, but ultimately, if you have any questions or comments on this, please feel free to reach out to us in the comment section. Uh, please like and subscribe, and uh, we will be back with another video really soon.